Hello, hello. Thank you for watching another episode of Cooking with Gravy with Jason Graves. Today's episode, we are going to make some kicking Cuban sandwiches. Today's meal is going to have plenty of cheese, plenty of meat, and plenty of flavor. The reason it's going to taste great is because my dad always said, because it's made with love. In today's meal, we're going to start off with some Texas toast. You can pretty much use any type of sandwich bread of whatever you want. I just like to use it. Now we're going to use some roasted pork. We're going to be using some ham. We're going to be using some sandwich pickles, nice and flat, and we're going to use some Swiss cheese. We're going to use some provolone cheese. We're going to use some Dijon mustard. We're going to use some minced garlic. We're going to use some peppers, or you can use some chili flakes. We just like to use some, uh, some dry peppers that we grow. Naturally, I always want to make sure I cook my ham a little more. I always like the little extra uh, pan cooked taste to it too, which is always a plus. We also are trying to take some uh, moisture out of some of the products in the sandwich. The main reason is because we always, I, I kind of hate a soggy sandwich of any type or any variety. So it just kind of takes away the risk. Now, one of the th ingredients I like to talk about is some chipotle mayo. Uh, it's going to be some of the things you're going to see in the pan later on. I love it. I'm addicted to it. So if you see an extra sauce on there beyond uh, is some an extra side of Dijon mustard towards the end, I highly recommend it. It's great for dipping, great for chicken wings, phenomenal. Now, we're going to have some onions are going to be working on right now. That concoction is going to be pretty much onions, garlic, we're going to uh, put some uh, pepper seasoning on there. Now, don't forget a little bit of olive oil once in a while won't kill anything. Uh, it just, it'll save you in a big headache for anything sticking. Now, the reason we're also throwing the pickles on there, too, is as I said, we also, we're trying to make the sandwich soggy. So, we're, if we put the pickles on the pad, we're just going to take some of that liquid out of there. So, it prevents a soggy sandwich. You're still going to get the good pickle taste on there. You're still going to get a good taste of a pickle in a sandwich. And you know what? Some people like to toast their stuff in a toaster. I like to put everything on the same pan. You get all the flavors still in there. Now, the nice thing, too, is we're going to be adding a little bit of butter now when we're working with this. Now, uh, when we are working with uh, the bread, uh, try to work with a, a lower temperature, medium lower. Uh, the main reason is because you don't want to overdo the bread when we do press it. Now, the reason why we want to press the bread is the main reason is because it makes it more of a crispier on the sandwich level and it prevents any type of like seepage so you don't get a soggy sandwich. I view it more of a like a perfect style sandwich for what we're dealing with. Now, when building these sandwiches, um, I like to view it more like a building. Every piece of the sandwich has its own place. First of all, between the bread and the rest of the sandwich always like to put a layer of cheese. The main reason is because that adds a layer of protection so the sandwich does not get soggy. Because as I said, we're trying to protect and make sure the sandwich is perfect. And I want my food to taste good and have a great experience. Then you can pretty much throw most of the ingredients in the center. Try to lean towards most of the softer items towards the center um, and uh, seal the other half with another set of cheese. Uh, most of the time I uh, I like to use multiple cheeses so I get a little extra flavor to what I'm working with. Once again, it acts like a seal and it'll also act like a glue too. So you can't go wrong with adding extra cheese. Now, in this type of kitchen that we do run here, uh, the some people will have a sandwich press. We do not. So. Uh, in this kitchen, we like to improvise. We like to improvise for ingredients and ideas, so the recipes are never uh, the same. Uh, so it's always good to improvise and experiment. So what you're going to be seeing in a second, instead of a normal sandwich press, we're going to be using a cutting board that we have that's a stone one that we uh, were just uh, given. And the nice thing about that, it's good, uh, phenomenal heat resistance to it. 
And I'm also putting a little extra weight on top of it so we get that more of that pressed sandwich feel. Now, keep in mind when you're pressing the sandwich, though, since one side is going to be cool, uh, when you're done pressing one side, don't forget to try to press the other side because you want to make sure it's a good experience on both of them. You get that crunchy sensation on both ends of it because this is your sandwich. you got to treat yourself well, and it's going to make it a phenomenal sandwich. Now, each side of the sandwich, I'd probably give it around three maybe five minutes you have to understand your oven because some ovens can cook a little quicker than the others in certain temperatures uh, so just keep an eye on with what you're working with now this is a final product tastes phenomenal highly recommend it dijon mustard chipotle mayo if you do like the video please leave a like please subscribe and i hope you have a phenomenal day and thank you very much for watching